I'm Dr. Gil Welch. I uh, work for the Dartmouth Institute for Health Policy and Clinical Practice. I'm here at the uh, Value Institute Fall uh, Symposium uh, to sort of share with uh, members here at Christiana some of the issues of where I think uh, we have too much medicine and how to help uh, rebalance the system. I think we've sort of given people this idea that the path to health is through your doctor. Mm -hmm. Right? That, that, you know, you go to your doctor to be healthy. No, that's not right. Right? You know, and, and I'm afraid that there's a whole industry that's beginning to sell the idea that the path to health is through testing yourself. And, like, that is very crazy. It's not good. Yeah, my, my book is called Less Medicine, More Health, Seven Assumptions That Drive Too Much Medical Care. And it's really about rebalancing the system and making sure we're not doing stupid things and we're not hurting people. We should be doing the things for a whole group in the same way that, that is what your grandmother would have told you. We want you to get a, a nap, or we want you to go play outside, we want you to eat your fruits and vegetables, and, and by all means don't start smoking. It's not that complicated. Much of what you said, frankly, is sort of the conventional folk wisdom of general medicine which is, you know, do less, expect more, communicate more with patients. And I think that that sort of is the foundation, the hallmark, of what it should be of modern medicine going forward. That's, frankly, in some ways, the key innovation we should be focusing on. And Dan, you're the medical director for the ACO, and there are measures that we have to have. And Gil talked about screening and that sort of thing. How does that fit into your wheelhouse? How does that fit into the work that you're doing? What, what are your thoughts? See, I, I mean, I feel like this sort of belligerent bully chasing my patients down the street to tell them they must, they must, they must. In the back of my mind, you know, as an evidence-based medicine person and someone who understands a little bit about risk, you understand that this can't work. A lot of the disturbing truths are reflected in the use of medications, and that's because the moments of prescribing and administration and dispensing are part of our healthcare system, and there's all types of pressures. So I struggle at, at one sense with understanding all the complexity that you're trying to communicate, but also understanding that, hmm, gosh, the game we're being asked to play yeah, yeah, uh -huh. is the standard rules that are being applied are, are caught up in this. I get it. It's like crazy, Bill. And, um, and, and those performance metrics, um, I, I think we've always thought performance metrics uh, could only have one effect, it would only make things better, but that's not right. They can make things worse. We need to push back against this idea that somebody's going to write a rule someplace and then, then, then our general thing is, is just to what extent can we meet that? And one question I, I would pose is, you know, have we not succeeded in supporting and encouraging what your grandmother or what your mother will tell you about the five things you need to do to right. be healthy? Have we not succeeded on that front so that people want an easier fix or a test or, uh, or medication? They should solve the issues that they're facing as far as the health, the health they're facing every day. That, that, that's at the heart of it. And that's why I'm so glad to hear you're, you're, you're in Wilmington thinking about food deserts and your uh, play, places for kids to play. I mean, that's so central. You are the community. And it really provides you the opportunity be, to think about what's the role of the hospital and the ambulatory care in regard to the health of the community. Because whether you want it or not, that's what you are. I'm, I'm impressed that uh, this organization is uh, striving to think ways to think differently about health care.